Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is another how-to video. Today I'm pulling sleeves out of this Caterpillar D2 engine block. This is the D3400 3 and 3 quarter inch bore by 5 inch stroke diesel engine found in all of the 3J and 5J model Caterpillar D2 tractors. And this is my pulling setup. It is just a uh, heavy duty puller bar, a couple of solid steel V blocks. I have some 1 inch grade 8 threaded rod double nutted on the end one inch threaded nut with a couple of flat washers and this is the pulling disc for the sleeves it engages in the bottom of the sleeve some quick specs on it the base diameter is four and seven sixteenths inches across the stepped top is three and eleven sixteenths because these are three and three quarter inch bore sleeves having that extra sixteenth of an inch ensures an easy fit and the entire disc is one inch thick i just turned that out on the lathe and it works pretty well so I'll get this puller assembled and show you how it works. So this is pretty simple. I'll just start with the rod and install the pulling disc on the rod with the stepped face up. And I'll guide this whole rod up through the base of this uh, sleeve until that disc engages with the bottom of it. Next I'll put the puller bar on the rod. And then I'll just start the nut to keep the entire puller from falling out of the engine block. And before I get going here, I like to apply grease to all of the thrust surfaces. It just helps to prevent the metal from pulling and galling, and you can actually get a little bit more uh, pulling force that way. Finally, now I'll get the V blocks put in underneath the puller bar, and you want to make sure you don't have any. Um, raised burrs or any kind of rough edges that could impact the um, deck surface of the block and cause any kind of craters or damage it in any way. You want it to be nice and flat and smooth. And pulling the first sleeve is always the most difficult because you've got the least amount of real estate to work with. You do not want to have the V-blocks on top of the sleeve flange at the top. That is going to be counterproductive to say the least. And now I'm ready to pull. So I just got to crank down on this nut, take up the slack, and see how tight these sleeves are going to be. The easiest ones I've ever moved would have came out just with a crescent wrench on here. The most difficult ones I ever had, I used a about a five foot cheater pipe on the wrench just to try and get them to pop. So we'll see what these are like. Oh yeah, this one's moving already. This one's going to be an easy one. We really only have to lift these sleeves oh inch and a half or two inches out of the block because that's all the deeper the engaging surfaces actually go. Once you get them up that high, you can pull them right out by hand. And there we go, it's free. And with the sleeve out, you can look down into the water jacket, which this one is remarkably clean. I've been into these before and had as much as an inch of sediment built up down there. I'm really surprised how clean that is. And further down in is the crankcase. So you have this thin copper seal at the counter bore. You always want to be mindful of. Sometimes they stay on the sleeve. This one stayed in there. I'll pick this uh, sleeve back up. You can see a little bit better now how that pulling disc engages with the bottom of the sleeve and pulls it right out. And that was the reason why we only had to go an inch or so high as soon as you get past this area here. It's pretty much free in the block. The counter bar area is even shallower. And you have the two rubber o-ring seals on the bottom which seal the lower portion of the water jacket from the crankcase. So that's the process. I just need to carry out the same steps on the remaining three sleeves and hope they all come out as easily as the first one did. Thank you. 
Okay, so you remember how I was just bragging about how clean this water jacket is? This one is more like it. Finding all kinds of debris coming out of here. Quite a localized pocket. We'll just take a little better look at this hole here and that's, that's what you usually find after 70, 80 some odd years of questionable quality <laughs> coolant. It's, uh, it's actually pretty common to find debris like that in these water jackets. And finally, number four, working on the last one. So there you go, that's how I pull sleeves on these Caterpillar D2 engines. Kind of a crude setup, but it works. And I was surprised how <laughs> how much stuff was back in uh, number four water jacket back here. That's actually kind of uh, more typical, more in line with what you usually see. It gets cleaner as you go to the front, but that makes sense because the water pumps up here, so you got the most circulation up here, slows down toward the back. You can also see way down in that bottom corner down there, that is, the outlet or the uh, the feed for the bell housing coolant passage that uh, circulates coolant through the starting engine and that's why your starting engine water jackets always get so clogged up with stuff because it starts building up at the back feeds right through there and then gets trapped in that starting engine that's kind of a catch point for it so anyway this has been caterpillar d2 sleeve pull that's exactly how i do it hope you guys learned something or at least i hope you're entertained thanks for watching guys hope to catch you later